I guess we will begin. All right, uh, ready? Cool. Hi, uh, my name is John Lenahan, and I will be going over Firebase with you guys today. Um, so just what we're going to cover, uh, just a really quick overview of what Firebase is and what it does. I don't really want to delve too deep into um, like code, like specific code examples and teach you guys how to use it. You can look at the docs for that. I kind of just want to um, just go over what the uh, possibilities of using this is. So later on when you're building apps, you can um, like remember this and go into, uh, go into your apps with the knowledge that you can use Firebase. Um, then we're going to move into a specific Firebase library, Angular Fire, um, obviously is working with Angular. Then go into an app demonstration and kind of, if we have some time, finish up with some uh, other features. Um, so Firebase is a real-time database that lets us store and sync data with a NoSQL cloud database. What does that mean? Um, the big takeaways from this is, A, it's NoSQL. Um, it's like MongoDB. Uh, it stores everything as JSON, but it stores it on the cloud versus on your local machine or in a server. Um, so it's still server, but it's a cloud platform. Um, it's also real-time, which we'll kind of uh, show later. But anything that really uh, changes in your database, if some other user is using it on their front end, it will automatically update. Um, it's real time. Any changes that occur in the database occur in the view as well. Um, so just really quickly, one thing that's kind of nice about Firebase is that it plays really well with others. Um, it has native libraries for React, uh, Ember, Ionic, Backbone. There's some other uh, tools that you could use, like GeoFire. It's, and, uh, it's like a geolocation service. Um, but the one we're going to talk about today is Angular Fire. Uh, we've all used Angular before. This is a really nice tool to uh, tie in with your Angular application. Um, it's officially supported, uh, and it's, but it's uh, officially supported AngularJS binding for Firebase, so it's not like a um, separate entity. It's by Firebase, so it's going to plug and play really well. Um, it allows us to do some really cool stuff. So uh, one thing to really remember from Angular is, is the two-way data binding. Um, we all kind of know what that is, but it deals with the model and the view, and any kind of change that happened in the model will all automatically update, or should update on the view, um, and vice versa. The view can update the model itself as well. When we incorporate uh, Angular, Fire, uh, Angular Fire into this, we actually get a three-way data binding um, kind of platform. Instead of just connecting the model and the view, we're also going to be connecting the database as well. And it allows us to do some like, crazy powerful stuff. It's really cool. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So I'm just going to kind of really quickly go over just a quick little uh, app that I put together to uh, kind of go over um, what this three-way data binding kind of is. So you see here we have two different windows, two different users, um, and we have our database to the left over there. Uh, you see we kind of have, we have this name and this text right here. So this text value is going to be interpolated onto the, the view here. What's really cool, though, is I can change this from anywhere. Um, hey, everyone. And it automatically updates on both views. So it's um, not just your personal machine, but also anyone else using it. But what's really cool is it automatically updates in the database itself as well. Um, and what's kind of neat as well, it's the three-way data binding. It, does, it goes both ways as well. So um, I could do something like this. And it automatically updates the front as well. Pretty simple, but kind of gives you an idea of the power behind this type of stuff. Um, so that seemed cool, and it might seem complicated, but the actual code to do this is crazy easy. We have, just up top, when we actually make our app, uh, declare angular.module, um, just make our app, we just use Firebase as a dependency. Um, right here is the only one I have. And then in our controller, that's controlling the, the view that we have there. We just have... Um, we inject a Firebase object as another dependency. And then the three lines of code that all we need to actually make this happen is you make a reference to the Firebase. So one thing I didn't mention was the database itself being online, it's all connected by a URL. So you have a URL to your database. And then for the name, we have this name object here, uh, property on the, the database. And you just make a reference to that database slash name. That's how you get that piece of information. Then you say ver, greet, you have a greeting uh, uh, variable, and you use the Firebase object with a reference to make a reference on the variable to that database, and just bind it to the scope. So here we just bound it to a greeting to the scope on the data. 
So we are actually outputting data.txt. Um, really easy to do. So, like, what's really the point of that? Um, we've used sockets before. We could do that with sockets. Uh, it's, is it better? Is it worse? Um, just really quickly to kind of show why I think Firebase is really powerful and really cool. I made this little um, chat app. Just pretty simple, but I have like one user. Hey, me. And it works. This is all with sockets. Um, and it's just working how you think it would. Uh, to actually see that code for that, though, it gets a little more complicated. So we have a socket factory that we're, we're using up here. We're injecting into the controller. Um, and we have a function that, on a click, will send a, mes a message on a, by admission um, to the back end where we have this connection on waiting for a new message, a mission, and it'll send the received data and emit to everyone else on that socket the data. And then back on the front end, we say, all right, this socket, listen for this new message, and when you get one, push it to this array that we have that we're going to be ng repeating over, and then apply, scope.apply to actually apply those changes. Um, kind of simple, but to get this to be uh, a little bit bigger might very easily kind of get blown out of proportion. Um, to do this with Angular, this Angular Fire, we'll kind of see how this goes. Um, simple. We start off with our kind of basic schematic. We just have a add message function and a um, just a message declared initially. We have our Firebase array um, injected into our controller. Um, then we just add a reference again, like we did before, to a new uh, new URL. Same to database, but slash messages. Um, we make a reference to that Firebase array with a reference. Same thing we did before. And then we use the uh, JavaScript, the Firebase uh, method dollar sign add. And we just push, pretty much push this object onto that array. Dollar sign add is, is given to you by Firebase, and it just adds that to the array. Um, and it works the exact same way. So uh, just to kind of proof of concept that this is the same kind of app, but using Firebase um, as our source. I need a username. And it works the same way. That's going to be updated here as well. That's not no like there's no sockets that I coded in. So, uh, Firebase does use some sockets in the back end, but I didn't do anything with it. All you, all I did was what you saw in this controller. Made it really easy to have a chat application just built with like four lines of code, um, and it's communicating. One thing too is this database. It's it's a database. It's actually persistent. So I could sign off, sign on, server close, server start. It's uh, it's persistent. My socket application that I built. That wasn't even, there was no, uh, nothing saving on the server side. There was no database. So anything I wanted to do to actually persist, I'd have to make uh, communications with Mongo or any, any other database that I'm using. Um, so it's really cool, but the one kind of caveat to that is it is higher up is a paid subscription. Um, initially, it's free. So you have ten, like a gigabyte of storage. Uh, it's like 10 gigabytes of transfer. You could host and all this stuff for free. I, I mean, for most prototyping apps, you're not going to actually need to do it. So there's no reason to like actually be uh, turned away from this just because of the cost. So you can prototype out something really easily. And a gigabyte in string, um, it could add up, but it's, you're, you might not really hit that very quickly. Um, just some other things that Firebase does. I was mentioning the database um, services that they provide. But recently, they uh, started actually, I think in 2014, they um, incorporated hosting. So just like, not just like Heroku, but if you want to have any static files uh, hosted, you can actually just put, like, host that up with Firebase really simply. It's just a couple of like, little commands once you install the, uh, the toolkit. And also authentication. Um, they have their own uh, email and password authentication that you could use. I did it before. It's pretty quick. And then they also offer Google, Twitter, and um, GitHub and stuff like that. It's OAuth. That's relatively straightforward as well. So you don't really have to do that on your own at all. Um, just kind of go over some resources. The docs are great, uh, just at least for setting up. They have, like Angular Fire is, is pre, it's uh, supported by Firebase. And, like it's, it's great. It's very simple to set up. Um, also, YouTube has some great tutorials out there. Um, this is one that I watched that if you guys want, I could send to you. Um, but yeah, that's uh, my presentation. Thanks. <laughs>